Welcome to this week's episode of the Mac Cousin Podcast. Clearly, we're not in studio today. We're um, doing something a little different. We're on the rooftop of uh, where our studio's at and overlooking Bank Street in Ottawa. It's actually the Glebe, and it's kind of under under construction, so I don't know <laughs> yeah. if you guys if you guys can see it. How we far back of, you can see, but it's all torn up. the last 10 minutes just people watching. Making but, fun of people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we got some uh, we got, yeah, some we got products. two products. Uh, so the first thing we want to talk about is this case for... A MacBook. Um, we didn't bring a MacBook up here with us. Yeah, you're not very smart. Stupid in hindsight, but uh, so essentially the case. It's by Thule or Thule or Thule, Thule, Thule maybe. Thule. I don't know, but it's a fairly rugged case. It's te- technically called a sleeve, which it's not. It's not a sleeve. It's more of a shell for your laptop, kind of. So it's a sleeve. No, it's a sleeve. No, a sleeve. You can't say it's a case. You can't say that's a yeah. case. Well, no, not like no, a case bag you, case. No, no, no. A sleeve no, no, you think no, no, something no, no. can slide in and out of. A case you think of like a... <laughs> yeah, that is what she said. A case you you um, you kind of think of like uh, an iPhone case that's hard that'll protect your phone. Right? Yeah. That's what I think of when I think case. Okay. But it's not a sleeve. When I think of like a laptop bag, I think of something you put it in. That yeah. This is a sleeve. They're that's right. Sleeve. This is a sleeve. That's false. It's a sleeve. No, it's a sleeve. Agree. Fuck you. It's nothing else but a sleeve. All right, moving on. No, you're dumb. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So this sleeve has, it's pretty rigid. Um, it's, it's not like a plastic, but it's a harder material. and It's, it's like a rubber. Yeah, kind of. And it's really got the ridges in it for extra oomph. Yeah, no, but like if something falls on it, it's going to absorb the impact a little bit better. Um, and then you can slide your laptop in into the case here. This way to keep it in place while you're moving. And then there's some elastics here. Now, if you're... Wanting to use this attached to your laptop, you can, and the the elastics are just tight enough that it stays snugly against the lid. Okay, so laptop. so uh, already just just looking at it, what I, I think that they should do is instead of having it sewn into the bottom, yeah, have it detachable mm-hmm. or, or Velcro. go on the top with Velcro. Mm-hmm. That's right. So have a little yeah. a little piece coming out here that's Velcro. So whenever you put your laptop in, it comes down and you Velcro it down so it stays. And then when you want to open your laptop, yeah. you unvelcro it and you push your laptop up. Yeah. What because are the if, if since it doesn't, this is useless. Yeah, one of the selling features or marketing points on their like box and website and stuff is that you can use this with your laptop without having to take your laptop out, but that's kind of a misnomer because you can't. Like you're saying, you have to take the laptop out of this out and set it down and then open the laptop, which is a bit of a problem. Yeah. If it was Velcro, you'd just unsnap it. That's what the they lid. should do. But um, The other thing that is actually a really good selling point for this is it's, it's not waterproof, but it's water resistant. So the zipper is water resistant as well. Yeah, so it's a lot. It's a lot like most uh, most laptop and and camera bags that actually say they're water resistant. They got that water resistant zipper, yeah. Um, so no water gets in them. And yeah. a lot of bags are coming like that uh, more and more lately, just because people are just walking mm-hmm. outside with it and it starts raining. And if yeah. you don't have this waterproof zipper, um, the the outside might be fine, but once the water hits the zipper, it's game over. Yeah. It's not going to save you from dropping your laptop in the river or something like that, I don't think. But it'll certainly, you know, if it is raining out or you get caught in well, the crossing. Like that, and that's what always happens, right? You might be walking yeah. around town or you might be walking from Starbucks or whatever. And um, and you might have this case in your hand. And if it didn't have this waterproof resistant zipper, then you'd be pretty much SOL when it starts raining. And then you're running and hiding or tucking it under your shirt. Now you can confidently walk and you're getting soaked, but yeah. at least you know that your laptop's safe. Yeah. So I, I used it for about a good week and I wouldn't mind recommending it. Um, it is a little bit pricey as you can see right here, but um, I don't, I don't know that it would be my number one pick, but it's certainly going to get the job done. If you're the type of person who's going to take your laptop, throw it in a book bag and just take off. Um, I wrote a, a review on it on the website, and that's one of the the key points I made was I, I took a trip to Europe, and I bought a brand-new MacBook Pro, and I tossed it in a book bag naked and took it across Europe for two weeks, and it came back pretty mangled, which was a little bit to be expected. I didn't have much chance or time to track down a case for it. Um, I, I would probably use something like this in that regard if you travel a lot. Um, I mean, uh, the downside is that there's no MacBook Air version of the case. So if you do travel a lot and you have a MacBook Air, you're kind of shit out of luck, but I'm, I'm sure they're going to bring one out sooner or later. So I think the lesson from all this is kids, wrap it before you stash it. <laughs> cool, let's move on. Up next, we have this cool um, iPhone case. 
Well, it's not an or iPod, iPod Touch case yeah. that actually converts your iPod I'm gonna, Touch I'm gonna put that on my mic, this is a into a, um, a cell phone, basically. So your iPod Touch is kind of going to look like a, an iPhone 4 and uh, and act like like a cell phone. At first, when when we got the product, uh, I, I didn't believe it. I was like, "What? <laughs> this can't happen." Um, but this company, um, actually, I think it's Xquiz. Xquiz. I don't know how to say that. Came out with this product that uh, that basically converts your iPod Touch into a, a cell phone. Um, so it has actually a spot for your uh, your SIM card that you put in in the phone or in the case, um, and then an app that after you, you have to jailbreak your your iPod Touch. Um, but after you do that, basically your your phone is um, or your iPod Touch is a phone. Um, yeah. it, it it even has the the uh, well no so the the buttons on an iPod Touch and an iPhone are I think inverted. Yep. Um, so on the left here are the volume buttons, and on the right these buttons are for the the case. The case has ba- like a built-in battery, so it's also like a battery pack. A battery pack. Um, you have to keep it charged. If, so here's the downside to this, right? You have to jailbreak the phone, which is a little bit of, or uh, the iPod, iPod which is a bit of a down, a downside if you don't like doing that, because um, you have to install obviously a dialer and stuff. Uh, but the the phone has to be charged, or the iPod Touch has to be charged, and the case also has to be charged for it to work together. Now, once you've done that and you you plug it all in together, these red and green buttons here turn it on and off. Turn the, the cellular cell- okay. portion of it off. Now. It worked for about a good week uh, with no problems, and then the case died, and we didn't know what was wrong. So it's a, this is going to sound borderline prejudice, but it's a product from China, so all the documentation that came with it was in Chinese and poorly translated. So I didn't really get any clear indication that a case had to be charged as well as the phone. Like, the, the dock connector is on the case, and it fits right through to the phone. When you plug it in, it shows the phone charging, but not the case. So it died, and then all of a sudden we realize, hey, I'm not, I haven't gotten a phone call in a week. Yeah. What's going on? So, but, but, so when you charge it, though, most battery packs, mm-hmm. when you charge the battery pack, your phone's plugged in. Yeah. Your phone will charge, and then your battery pack will charge. Right. It, it's not like that. You have to take the, the iPod. Touch well, out. it might be like that. Maybe we've got a bunk product, but... We charge it for 48 hours, um, and then we put it all back together. Uh, we did it twice. We charged it together like this yeah, for 48 hours, and then we noticed it still didn't work, and we took it apart, charged them separately for 24 hours each, made sure the iPod was charged fully, and the case had 24 hours, plugged into the wall, um, and it didn't do anything. So now um, one of the weird things is when you turn it on, which I'm struggling to do right now because it's hard to see, but um, two batteries pop up in your menu bar. So the battery for the iPod touch indicator and yep. the battery indicator for the case. Uh, the case just is dead no matter what. So I don't I don't know what's going on or what's wrong with it. Like like I said, uh, I've tried a good three weeks with this thing, trying to figure it out. And it's finally gotten to the point where I don't know what's going on. And I've sent some emails to get some answers. But what, when it did work, it worked just like a normal yeah, iPhone. Yeah, I remember that. The dialer, you could dial, you could send and receive text messages, SMS. Yep. If your phone has a, or if your like cellular plan has a data plan, yep. it works. You can get on your data plan wherever you are. Um, if your pay-as-you-go, I mean, it all works like a normal cell phone. So all you need really is a SIM chip. It's a normal size SIM chip, not a mini chip SIM chip or anything like that in here. Um, and it just pops in and out. Um, you had a jailbreak. Uh, so we were on iOS... Uh, 4.3 point, I don't know what at the time. Uh, so we had to use Red Snow to break. You know, we jailbroke it, and it all kind of worked within 20 minutes. Cool. Um, it, it went off without a hitch. It wasn't like this big song and dance to get it installed. Except now you have some Except issues. now there's some issues, and I think it's because it's not charging properly, or maybe I don't have a setting set properly for the charging. But, I mean, when you did do it right away, and you're like, yeah. call it, I'm like, what? And it started ringing. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, you got an iPhone 4, and then I looked closer, and I was like, that's your iPod Touch? What? Yeah, so the problem with the iPod Touch and why this isn't more of a generally practiced thing is there's no speaker built in to the iPod, right? Okay. Like your iPhone, there's a built-in uh, ear speaker, um, and there's speakers on the bottom. This case gives you that. So this case has a speaker yep. at the top so you can hear, and uh, your mic pickups, and there's a mic pickup on the back here, and there's a hole for your your actual camera yeah. so it can yep. take your photos um, so pretty much I mean it it looks janky because it, they're clearly trying to rip off an iPhone 4 look and feel I think it would have been cooler had they not they just made a case that looked something cool um, but for the most part I mean it if you have an iPod touch on hand already and you don't want to pay a data plan or you don't want to pay for a new iPhone for a new iPhone 
Um, it's a great way to get you know a device that can do the latest iOS and still be a. Or I mean, even if uh, even if you have kids um, and they want an iPhone and they've always had an iPod Touch, yeah. Then now you have the ability of just converting their iPod Touch into a phone, so you don't actually have to go out and buy them an iPhone and sign a new contract and yada yada yada. Right. You just have to get the SIM card and the plan and convert your iPod Touch that they've already had growing up, and now they have a, a basically an iPhone. Cool. Cool. So uh, I believe that's that's all the products we have uh, for yeah. this week's episode. Um, you can check us out at uh, twitter.com slash macgasm. Uh, we're on YouTube. It's just macgasm. Macgasm podcast. Yeah. So uh, youtube.com slash channels slash macgasm podcast. Uh, we're everywhere. Flickr. I mean, just search for macgasm and it'll, all those things will come up in Google. Cool. Uh, so uh, that's it for uh, this week's episode. I'm Brandon Schnell. And I'm Joshua Schnell. Have a good one. It's super fucking distracting up here. Well, because you're looking that way. I well, no, I'm looking at you. And yeah. You know, yeah, I see the people walking by, so I'm like, oh, hey, hey. <laughs> How you doing?